Muslims are meant to be people of reflection. And really, as an Ummah today, we need to reflect. Why are we in the state that we're in? Is it a lack of numbers? And the answer to that is no. One in every five people walking on the face of this earth is a Muslim. Is it because of wealth and resources? And again, the answer is no. Many of the greatest natural resources are in the hands of the Muslims. So what's the reason? A billion in number? So much wealth? And why are we in the decadence that we find ourselves in today? The reason for this is that there is a lack of men and women of substance. Men and women who are mobilized. When Ali radiallahu anhu became the Khalif, and this was in a time of great turmoil, Uthman radiallahu anhu had just been martyred, he ascended the pulpit and his first inaugural speech, his first khutbah was what? All he said was when he ascended the pulpit, he said, Oh people, you are in need of a rajulun fa'ala qawwal. Oh people, you are in need of a man of actions and not a man who just speaks. And then he descended from the pulpit. And really this was a miracle of the Prophet wasallam that he created men and women of substance. Because he never worked on structures. He worked on the hearts and the minds of individuals until he created men and women who changed the landscape of history. Men and women who were heavy in the scales of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Men and women like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Upon occasion, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was climbing a tree and he had very thin shins. And when the Sahaba, they saw his thin shins, they began to laugh. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned to the Sahaba and he said, what's making you laugh? And they said, oh Messenger of Allah, the thin shins of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And the Prophet sallallahu said, I swear by Allah, if the thin shins of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud were placed in one side of the scale, and the mountain of Uhud was placed in the other side of the scale, the thin shins of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud would be heavier than the mountain of Uhud. Why? Because see, every muscle, every drop of blood which ran through the thin shins was for the sake of Allah. They weren't a large mass, but they were of quality. And this is a sunnah of Allah. Allah never judges a group of people by their numbers. He judges them by their quality, their substance. The greatest men of this ummah were who? It was the 313 who participated in the battle of Badr. Upon occasion, Jibreel والسلام, descended to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, who are the best from your Ummah? And he said, Badran, Those who participated in the battle of Badr. And Jibreel والسلام, said, Similarly, out of all those angels in the heavens, all those angels in the heavens, the most honorable and the best are those angels who descended on the day of Badr and assisted the Muslims. These were 313 men, but they were men of substance. They trusted in Allah. They stood against an army of a thousand who was armed to their teeth. They hardly had any horses, hardly had any weapons, but they trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until they reached a state which was unparalleled in the history of Islam. In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a Sahabi called Hatib ibn Abi Balta. And Hatib was a Badri Sahabi. And when the Prophet ﷺ decided to attack Makkah, he informed the Sahaba. And what Hatib did, and Hatib was a man who had migrated, but he wasn't a Qurayshi. He wrote a letter to the people of Makkah informing them of the plans of the Prophet Sallallahu And the Prophet Sallallahu sent Ali Miqdad and Zubair Anhum 
and he said, go to the garden of Khakh and there you will find a lady on a camel and with her she will have a letter and bring that letter back. And they went to the garden of Khakh and exactly where the Prophet ﷺ said, they found a lady on a camel and they said, give us the letter. And she said, I have no letter. I have no letter. But these people trusted in the words of the Prophet ﷺ. They knew the Prophet ﷺ said something, it was the truth. They said, give us the letter, otherwise we'll strip you. And from the plaits of her hair, she brought a letter forth, which was from Hatib informing the people of Makkah about the plans of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ summoned Hatib. And he said, what's this Hatib? And Hatib said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, do not hasten to pass judgment over me because I am not a man who likes disbelief or I'm displeased with Islam. But the reason I did this is that every other migrant muhajir has family in Mecca who can help their direct family. I have no family. And the only reason I did this was so the people of Mecca wouldn't harm my family. And the Prophet Sallallahu turned to Hatib and he said, Indeed, you have spoken the truth. And Umar was standing there. Umar was Umar. And Umar said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, let me strike at the neck of this manafiq. And the Prophet said, O oh, Umar, didn't Hatib participate in the battle of Badr? And Umar said, Yes, he did. He said, Maybe Allah looks favorably upon the people of Badr. And he says, O oh, people of Badr, do as you wish because Jannah has become wajib upon you. Why? Because see, these people trusted in Allah. Numbers never scared them. Nobody aspires to be a Salahuddin. Nobody tries to be an Umar ibn Khattab or Abu Dhar or Abu Bakr anhum, or a Khadija or a Fatima. Nobody aspires to be like them. We live off our legacy. You know, we remember these people, but none of us aspire to be like them.